What's up, gang? Mike here, head trader at True Trading Group on August 20th. Uh, red day for me. You guys got to bear with me. My voice is, is still gone. My throat is killing me. I don't, I don't know. Um, you know, my, 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 I feel okay, but my throat is just killing me. I don't know why. Uh, my voice is, is gone. So just, I'm going to make this video kind of quick because it, it, it hurts the more that I talk. Um, <clears throat> but today was a very slow day. It was a, a very, very low volume day. Um, I don't know what it, we finished with, but earlier today, we only had about 85 stocks that were on pace to trade their daily average volume or, or better. Um, and typically on a slow day, that number is around, you know, 250 to 300. Um, and earlier this morning, it was only around 85. So you guys are the daily chart. I'll just, we'll show you. You can see just, you know, when you look at today's volume, I mean, just tiny, 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 tiny volume. So there really wasn't much going on. And that low volume was all across the board and it made for a very choppy trade. <clears throat> um, even like the small caps today, very, very choppy. Um, you know, like some of the big, like CETX, you guys can see, um, aside from selling off completely, you know, in the, the final two hours of the trading day, look at earlier in the day. You know, I mean, it never really extended. You know, you see a lot of tails in here, a lot of wicks, a lot of tails. You don't really see solid candles. You don't really see a moment where the stock just, you know, really really started to, to, to take off. Okay. And really start to start to extend. You don't, you don't see any, anything like that. Um, it was very, very choppy today. And it's typical when you get to the, um, the middle to end of August, you know, you're getting towards the end of summer. Um, some schools started back up last week and this week. Um, and volume is, is typically light during, during this time of year. So this is, this is normal. Okay, but it makes for a very choppy trade, like you see in CETX. There was also ENDP today, that was another good one. Uh, but again, you know, very choppy action. You can see off the bell, strong candle off the bell, very deep pullback. Okay, then you had a nice another move higher, and then another deep pullback. Then you had a new high of the day, and then another deep pullback. So you can see all these, like the moves were not fluid they were not steady here you see another deep pullback and then we bounced back okay and then it looked like we were going to make a move and then we pulled it all in i mean it was just very choppy action uh all across the board um and it made for a a little bit more of a difficult trading day because you were not getting the the continuation you're not getting that momentum building follow through it was kind of like this okay and that makes for a choppy trade and makes for a tough trade so if you guys were, were, were read today, um, I wouldn't really beat yourself up over it. But what I will say is if you were read because you went after, you know, one or two trades, it was just choppy. You really didn't, didn't see much and you decided to call it a day. That That's what happened to me. I made two trades. I really didn't see much. I decided to call it a day and manage my downside because I didn't like the action. But if you recognize the this action, okay, and you just continue to trade and trade and trade and trade and trade, that's your own fault. OK, that's your own fault. Um, days like today, you have to recognize them and you have to pull the reins back on yourself and you have to stop yourself from over trading because if the action just isn't there and the juice isn't worth the squeeze. You've got to learn to just stop yourself from from over trading and not continuing to just go after it, go after it. Today should not have been a day where you're making six, eight, ten trades. OK, that, that's just not the type of day that it was. So, um, you know, that is what I would say to take away from today's action. And the lesson to take from this video is to just be able to recognize the action, be able to recognize the type of day that you're in and know when to step on the gas and know when to hit the brakes. And today should have been a day that you realize in the morning that it's time to hit the brakes. When you see how light the volume is, you see how choppy the action is. You're not getting a lot of stocks that are breaking through highs and giving you real good follow through is very choppy. Um, and that sets the tone for the rest of the day. And if you notice that in the morning, but you still continue to, tr to trade during lunch into the afternoon, then, you know, it was lack of discipline and you have yourself to blame for it. Um, and that's what I think you guys really should focus on and take from this video is, is the importance of recognizing the action and 
you know, stepping on the gas or hitting the brakes. So let's get to my trades. We'll start with the SPY. Um, this was actually really frustrating because the SPY ended up doing what I thought it was going to do, but um, I still ended up getting stopped out of this trade because of a move that was really, really unexpected for me at least. I, I did not expect the SPY to push all the way back up and test yesterday's close. What I was looking for, okay, was a break below yesterday's low, which also lined up with a support area from the 13th. If I take it to a 15 minute chart, it's easier to see. Okay, so here's the support on the 13th. Here's yesterday's low. Okay, I was looking for the SPY to break below yesterday's low and work its way down to fill this gap. Okay, that's what I was looking for. That was the game plan pre-market today. Well, as soon as the bell rang, the bell rang and we just dropped straight through that level like a hot knife through butter. And I was like, what the hell? You know, I was like, I'm not, I wasn't going to just chase this down and just buy, you know, I was looking for us to like consolidate here a little bit, maybe try to bounce off this level at first, then put it like a double top, then roll over. And then I was going to look to buy puts. And I mean, as soon as the bell rang, it was boom, right through yesterday's low. And I was like, oh, well, that sucks because, you know, you're, that makes, that's going to make for a tougher entry point for me. And what we start to have here is, you know, resistance at VWAP pushing the, the SPY down on this bounce back attempt right there uh, on VWAP. So as soon as we bounce back to test VWAP, we had the trade line crossing down underneath it. Right there is where I bought the SPY put options. Okay, take you guys my trade announcements right there. You can see I'll zoom in. I bought the SPY 291 strike tomorrow expiration puts at $1.33 right there. Okay, I was looking for this trade line to, to, to act as resistance. I was looking for the trade line to force us. I was looking for the trade line to force us to a new low and continue lower. But we ended up kind of bouncing back. And even though we started bouncing back up in here, I, I was still okay and very comfortable in the trade because I'm looking for this level that was previously support. I'm looking for it to be resistance. And at the time, you can see we were. It was, it was acting as resistance for us all morning. And then I start to see this uptrend line, which was acting as a little little uptrend support line. I, I viewed this as a little ascending triangle, but also, you know, just a big bearish flag. Like here's your flag pole going back to yesterday's um, close. Okay, there's your flag pole. There's your flag. And I was looking for the spy to do something like this. Okay, to break down below that level and then continue down to test the low of the day. That's the move that I was looking for. And I actually planned on, I was going to add to this position. If we broke below that line, I was going to add to the puts, but we ended up breaking back above that, res that, that resistance level. And, and right here, I had to stop out of that trade. I stopped out right there and we broke back above it. You can see here, I sold out 89 cents. That was my big loss on the day. That was, that was the majority of my losses um, on the day, um, I really was not expecting this move. Okay. I really was not expecting that move. I really thought we were going to consolidate below yesterday's low. And I thought we were going to consolidate base out, base out, and then roll over and then go down and test those lows later in the day, which we ended up doing. Look, I mean, we ended up going all the way down, making fresh lows. Um, we closed at the low of the day and then we were trading even lower after the bell. This is exactly what I was looking for. I just was not expecting that. And I just was not comfortable holding on to the position all the way up to 292 and a quarter. You know, I was not comfortable holding this up. All I mean, those options would have been down to, I don't even know where they would have been at that point. They would have been at, I don't know, 40 cents or something like that. I mean, it would have been brutal. There's no way I was I was okay holding and I was no way I was okay carrying that much risk. So I had to exit the position when I did. So it was frustrating to see it work itself out later in the day. Um, but you know, what can I do? That was really and that was that was the majority of my losses today. And then I had a small loss on IBIO. <clears throat> this IBIO opened up and was putting in a. I'm sorry, guys, my, my throat, my voice, my, my throat's killing me. So you got to bear with me with my voice a little bit. We were forming this little wedge pattern off the bell and the trade line was working its way up. So I just took a stab at this thing right here. Okay. At a buck 30, you guys can see long at a buck 30. And then I sold out at a buck 10, a buck 20. So right when we broke down below that, I just sold out of it right there. 
So that was, that was a, a, a small loss. I guess the majority of my losses was on that, the spy put option trade. <clears throat> but, you know, the, the lesson to take from the day, not necessarily lessons within my trades themselves, but the fact that after, you know, I, I made these two trades, you know, I'm taking a look around and I'm looking at some of these other small, uh, first of all, I'm looking at some of the larger caps. Volume was extremely light. Okay, below well below daily average volume. Then I'm looking at some of the small caps. I'm looking at like CETX. I'm like, man, this is choppy. This is choppy. ENDP. I'm like, man, this is choppy. And I just said to myself, I, you know, I don't think the risk is worth is worth it right now. Um, the juice is not worth the squeeze. Let me just kind of control my downside and and not turn this into a really really bad day, and just keep my losses under control. And I just kind of packed it in. I, I really didn't see much the rest of the day. And I, I hit the brakes. I pulled the reins back on myself. And that's really the lesson I want you guys to take from the trading day today. Um, because I, I could have just continued to trade and continue to go after things. And, you know, it, it could have made things a lot worse. So I'm coming out of the day, a very manageable loss, small loss on IBIO and a, a full size loss on, on the spy put options, but manageable. OK, manageable. And if I just kept going and going and going and going, it could have been a disaster. So that's what I want you guys to take from the day is recognizing the type of environment that you're in, recognizing the type of day that it is and adjusting, you know, how aggressive you are based on that. OK, so that's it. I'll see you guys in chat tomorrow and we'll look to kind of um, erase this red day and get back on track. I'll see you guys in chat. Take care.